If you're serious about color grading, there are a couple things that you're going to need. One is a calibrated monitor. The other is good video scopes. You know, waveforms, vector scopes, RG parades, you get the idea. And while the video scopes that are built into DaVinci Resolve are pretty good, I've found something better. It's called Nob Omniscope and it's quickly become one of my most used plugins. Let's take a look. Before we begin, just a quick bit of disclosure. Time and Pixels, the company that makes Nob Omniscope, is not sponsoring this video. They did give me a license for Omniscope so I could check it out, but there was no obligation to make a video, no money exchanged hands, and Time and Pixels doesn't have any input on what I say in this video, nor did they get to see this video before it was published. Cool? Let's move on. Fun fact, did you know that most pro colorists don't use the built-in video scopes in their NLE? Traditionally, they actually use hardware scopes, which are completely separate machines dedicating to analyzing your image. They tend to be more flexible, more accurate, but unfortunately, really, really expensive. Now, no, Omniscope is great because it bridges the gap between those expensive scopes and the scopes that are built into your NLE. Let me explain. Nob Omniscope is both a plugin as well as a standalone software that gives you all of the accuracy and flexibility of a hardware scope without the expensive hardware. That being said, if you do have a second machine and you're able to send an SDI signal from your main computer to that machine, you could set up Omniscope on that second machine just like you would a hardware scope. See? Flexible. But the way I and probably you would use Omniscope is as a plugin right in your NLE. It's really easy to do. Let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and take a look. All right, we're here in DaVinci Resolve. I've got a clip lined up, ready to grade. We're going to use Nob Omniscope to inform that grade. So we're not going to be using these scopes right here. We're going to be using Omniscope. Now, before we get started with that, there's a couple things to keep in mind. First of all, in order to get the best experience with Nob Omniscope, you're going to want to put it on a timeline node. That way, no matter what clip you're working with, Nob Omniscope will pick it up, it'll see it, it'll analyze it, it'll give you the information you need. Second thing you're going to want is a second monitor because otherwise no Omniscope and DaVinci Resolve will be on the same monitor. You're gonna have to switch back and forth. It's gonna be annoying. With a second monitor, you can have no Omniscope on one monitor, DaVinci Resolve on the other. You can make your adjustments. You can see them reflected in no Omniscope in real time, and it's gonna be a much smoother experience. You can see I've got two monitors here set up. No Omniscope's gonna be on this one. DaVinci Resolve is gonna stay up here. I'm gonna make my adjustments here. You'll see it in Nob Omniscope. Cool? Let's move on. Let's head over to our timeline nodes. And in our effects, we're going to search for Nob. There it is, Nob Omniscope. We're gonna drag and drop that onto our timeline node. We're gonna make sure everything here is correct. RGBA 10 bit, that works. Rec 709 full, that works. Image scaling 100%, good. Frames per second, we're going to change to 24. And we're gonna click Open Omniscope. And you'll see down here in my second monitor, we now have everything set up. We've got our source image here. We've got an RGB parade. We've got a waveform. We've got a saturation luminance meter. We've, or scope, sorry. We've got a histogram. We've got a vector scope. And we've got another vector scope that's split between lows, highs, and medium. But the really cool thing about Nob Omniscope is I'm not locked into this layout. I can resize these as needed. In fact, I can have a completely different layout. Let's go ahead and we'll just start with a brand new clean layout. Everything's deleted. This is a brand new clean layout. Nothing's here. Let's go ahead and add some stuff. We're gonna do scopes. Add new source signal, boom, there it is. And I can put this wherever I want. And I can snap it wherever I want. If I wanna have it on the side, I can. Down at the bottom, I can do that too. But right now, we'll just stick it in the middle. And I want this to be a little bit bigger, so I'm going to size it up a bit. Next thing I want is a new waveform. And once again, I can drag that here. I can put it in this section, boom, and make it a little bigger. And I want this to actually be an RGB parade. So I will 
right click and I can colorize it. And there we go, we've got our RGB parade. Next thing that I'm gonna want is a vector scope. So we can come down and we can choose vector scope. That's gonna pop up here. I can drag this, I can put it on the side over here. And once again, size that up. Now below this RGB parade, I want a waveform. So scopes, waveform. And that is gonna go right here. I'm gonna size it up and we're going to change it to luminosity. And then we'll add a new saturation luminance scope. And we'll put that right there. A histogram, which we'll put there. This didn't exactly go where I wanted it to go. So I can drag it, size it, boom, there it is. And then we're gonna do one more RGB parade or not RGB parade, one more vector scope. That's gonna go right here. And we're gonna change the mode, split, low, medium, high. Boom, there we are. And you can see if we come back into the scopes menu, there are just a bunch of stuff that we can do. We can add a skin tone analyzer. We can add false color, 3D color cube, just all kinds of stuff. Time code, even audio meters, text display, just all kinds of stuff that we can put on here and we can customize them however we want. But for now, I think this is a pretty good layout. And if I wanted to keep this, I could come out to layout, save layout as, and we'll call this main no audio. And now we're ready to grade. So if we come back into DaVinci Resolve, we can go into our clip nodes and we can start grading. I could, I don't know, bring down my lows, bring up my highs, maybe add a little bit of contrast and a little bit of saturation. And you can see down here in Nob Omniscope, all of that is being reflected. All of my scopes are being updated in real time. The source signal is being updated in real time. And no matter what I do up here in DaVinci Resolve, that is going to be shown in Nob Omniscope. It's really, really cool. It gives you a lot more information than you would get with the default scopes in DaVinci Resolve, and it's super flexible. See, super easy. Now, like I said, this works best if you have a second monitor, which I actually didn't have when I first started taking a look at Nob Omniscope. Well, I did have one, but it had been disconnected because I wasn't really using it that much. And I really didn't want to completely rearrange my desk and reinstall my second 27 inch monitor just so I could use better video scopes. Luckily, I found this little inexpensive 17 inch portable monitor that's super easy to hook up and you can calibrate it so it was perfect for my needs. I'll have it linked below if you wanna check it out. Anyway, I've been using Omniscope for a few months now and I've had zero performance issues. Everything runs smoothly, it hasn't crashed once, and when I use the scopes to inform my grade, I tend to get results that I like. That being said, there was definitely a learning curve. Actually, there were a couple learning curves. For example, Nob Omniscope has a lot of scopes that you won't find in your typical NLE, like a 3D color cube and CIE plots, so in order to get the most out of Omniscope, I had to learn how to read those scopes. Plus, I ran into a snag when working in DaVinci Color Management. I just wasn't getting an accurate image representation in Omniscope when I was using DaVinci Wide Gamut. Luckily, Time and Pixels has documentation on how to set Omniscope up with DaVinci Wide Gamut. So basically, read the instructions and you'll be good to go. Moving on, let's talk about pros and cons, starting with the pros. Like I said before, Nob Omniscope is super flexible. You can set it up any way you want, save layout presets, and each scope has multiple functions, so I could have a waveform that's dedicated to analyzing the red, green, and blue channels, and another one that's analyzing the Luma channel. You also get a lot more scopes from Nob Omniscope than you do with the built-in scopes in your NLE. Yes, you get waveforms, RGB parade, histograms, and vector scopes, but you also get false color, luma versus saturation, a brand new skin tone analyzer, and a whole bunch more. Plus, 
built-in masking. Did I mention that? You can add a mask directly to the video source in Omniscope so you can analyze different sections of the frame. No need to use qualifiers or add a power window or anything like that. And finally, Nobe Omniscope is a lot less expensive than traditional hardware scopes and you can use it on your current computer in almost any NLE. Let's actually back up and talk about price for a second because that's both a big pro and a small con. Let me explain. Nobe Omniscope comes in three different versions. There's a photo version, which is exactly what it sounds like. It gives you the basic scopes and the software version of the program so you can import a still and analyze it. That's $99. Then there's the video version, which gives you support for NLEs, Decklink, Ultra Studio, NDI, as well as more scopes and audio meter and priority support. That costs $235, plus there's a $70 per year optional upgrade and support plan. Finally, we have the pro version, and that gives you everything. Everything in the photo version, everything in the video version, plus more scopes, more hardware support, and access to their Discord server. That costs $399 with an optional annual upgrade and support plan for $99 a year. Now, like I said, these prices are a lot lower than hardware scopes. Plus, if you get the upgrade and support plan, you get the added benefit of always having the latest version without having to buy an entirely new hardware scope. That's the great thing about this pricing. That being said, the video version and the pro version of Nob Omniscope, which by the way, are the only versions I'd recommend to people looking to get this for color grading, are priced high enough that I wouldn't recommend it to anyone that's not already making money with video or to people who aren't serious about color grading. Basically, this pricing is what I like to call commitment pricing. If you're a hobbyist or you're an editor that isn't sure that color grading is something that you're interested in focusing on, no Nob Omniscope is likely too expensive for you. Not that you can't afford it, it's just not worth the money if you're not going to take color grading seriously. That being said, if you are serious about color grading, if you're working on projects that are making you money and require a top-notch grade, then Nob Omniscope is 100% worth the price and you should definitely click the link in the description of this video and get yourself a license. The only other con about Nob Omniscope that I've found is something that I've said before. To get the best experience with the plug-in version, you really need a second monitor for your computer. There are some inexpensive ones out there like the one I have linked below that will do the job, but it is an added expense and unfortunately one that I think is necessary. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself minimizing resolve to look at the scopes and then going and making your adjustments and then minimizing again. And that's just not a good way to work. So all in all, Nob Omniscope is an amazing tool that is completely worth the money, but only if you're already making money with video and color grading is a big focus of yours. So if you fall into that category, click the link in the description of this video and pick up a license. If you don't fall into that category, then click this this link right here to learn about some of my other favorite DaVinci Resolve plugins and whether you fall into that category or not, don't forget to go out and make stuff. Thanks for watching.